Do, 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 looking out my back door. So here's my little, I guess, seedling station. I'm letting them grow so they can get ready to go in the garden someday. Oh, little messes. I decided not to crop out any messes today. This is my lovely umbrella seating area and my awesome coffee mug made by Steve Bernacki. Fabulous potter. Very nice guy. A book I'm reading right now. Oh, it's so good. If I just sit down to read it, that is. Um, so here is the first couple of gardens. My pool right in the very center of my yard. So everything's been strategic and putting everything. Uh, this face is south and east. And here's the garden bed. That is a tennis net shade thing that they put on the, the fences of the tennis courts. And, you know, recycle, reuse. You gotta use what you can. Gardening can be expensive. Um, that's a volunteer corn. I don't even know what kind. Lots of cucumbers and peppers, little herbs. I got this fennel. Oh, look at fennel. Every time I try to do these, I find new things to, to add in. But lots of peppers. And there's Eris over there, a little garden friend. My water. When I turn on the water, I always let it run to make sure it's not boiling hot before I put it on my plants. Here is some herbs and more peppers, some beets that are still in the ground. I can't believe it. Uh, this loofah and birdhouse gourds and bottle gourds and beans and some broccoli that I'm hoping to go to seed. You know, having seed that does great. Um, I kept it alive and snapped off everything, not letting it go to seed so it maybe could be more heat tolerant. Um, seeds will take on traits as they grow. So lovely little thing. That's a Nicotania plant. Yes, I am growing tobacco, but I'm growing it because it's got some really cool flowers. And Pumeria. Pumeria, yes, it can take some direct sun in our climate. Uh, this is a bed. Oh, worm compost. <laughs> Love it. This is a bed that has, it's a permanent bed with asparagus and strawberries and an artichoke. The artichoke's way back here. La la la. And that's really fun. This is, of course, the, the red bed. Love taking uh, old things and repurposing them. And it's been fun trying to find ways to incorporate beds into my garden beds like watermelon and cantaloupe, and there's a pepper in there with eggplant, some rudbeckia, pepper plant, and there's my blackberry jam bush, and that's a peanut butter berry bush. This is kind of a staging area that I put plants that I want to put in. I put the kiwi over here, and I've been trying to keep it alive, but I don't know that it's successful. I think it might die, <laughs> which is kind of good to know. I didn't put any effort in building a trellis for it and find out that, oh, look at it all that work, and now they did. <laughs> but anyway, so here's here's the garden. The borage is finally dried up, and it's let, done its life cycle. And a lot of people think, oh, I can't keep anything alive. But sometimes things have a life cycle, and they don't live. And that's what perennial is. They have perennial growth. No, not excuse me I've got that wrong annual growth will come back annually they don't live all the time so if you have a flower or a vegetable that suddenly dies and you're like oh my gosh I'm a failure don't think that because some things don't stick around perennial growth is something that is you plant like trees they're deciduous they lose their leaves but they're also perennial because they stay around um, there are flowers that have a life cycle. They grow, they produce seed, they die. The seed lives on. Well, there are plants that you put in and it's permanent and they grow or they'll live several years. Peppers and eggplant, tomatoes can be perennial. Well, they're typically grown annually. Um, so here is my dragon fruit growing up of some dead wood that I found and I tied it on the tree and I'm training the dragon fruit up hoping it will eventually 
do that this is it will attach to the tree eventually it gets these little air roots so this is some safflowers that i haven't pulled the seeds out of yet because some of them aren't too bad but others have these death spikes on them and they're painful to touch this is an awesome composter a little steer manure to add to the compost for some nitrogen we have these three big bean bins that we got from the city some corn over here in a grow bag put it in a little more shade so it's going to get a lot of sun but still get some shade as well because corn is not happy to set fruit too much in the heat it loves the heat but this heat is crazy um, so lots of tomatoes and it looks like a blood spatter map but those are actually supports for tomatoes and eggplant and stuff so this is another headboard or part of a bed anyway and those are cantaloupe little midget cantaloupes flowers um, this is an experiment I've seen this happen and I think it's really cool this is summer squash and the summer squash grows typically sprawling all over and you can see these leaves are massive so it shades all of the garden and things have a hard time growing around it um, so I'm trying to grow it up so I can have more because I love summer squash and I don't have acres. I have feet. <laughs> this is some beautiful little fairy tale eggplant. I can't wait to try that. Watermelon, squash, and here's a butternut squash. Um, and you can see in there, I, I had, I gave the plants the opportunity to have some sex yesterday. So you can see there's four portions or four parts to the pollen on there and then here is a male flower and it only has one so the pollen from the male flower has to get to the female flower well if you take the male flower off and rub it around the female flower you can pollinate them by hand instead of worrying about pollinators this is a tomatillo I'm getting lots of tomatillos and they have to be planted close to each other this is the Jamaican cherry. It shocked really bad. Um, I don't know if it's gonna make it or not, but I'm just gonna let it sit and see if the roots will do something. More tomatoes, that's the other part of that bed. Ah, lots of viney growth. I love vines. I can't even begin to tell you how much I love vines. So I'm really excited about this part of the garden. Um, there's sunflowers. Those are the mammoth, American giants and Russian mammoth. These are yams, and these are sweet potatoes, and art Jerusalem artichokes, and I got a seed finally to germinate. This seed is from the late 80s. I got it from my dad. That's a Hubbard squash. See Hubbard squash? And I put a whole bunch of seeds in there, and only one of them so far has germinated. Uh, we'll see if any of the other ones do. And that's another sweet potato, and if I my little failure of a potato patch so far let's we'll see if anything happens with it but that's okay failures happen success happens you can't have success without failure and if you have success you're eventually going to have some failure get over it um, so this is a bed from a uh, part of a bed from a box spring so my friend took it apart so it could fit in her garbage can and she recycled or reused. She gave this to me to use as a trellis. I'm so excited. There's another one up there. I can't wait till I have cucumbers and melons just dripping from it. That would be cool. Uh, some Swiss chard, more watermelon and cantaloupe and another zucchini. And this is a volunteer tomato. This thing is growing like crazy. I don't even know what kind it is, but hopefully I'll get something out of it. I put some blossoms set on it. My tomatoes have not done too well so far. I planted some of them in November and I got very little of them. Those that were producing got curly top virus, so I had to cut them out. This is a red night, purple beauty pepper right here. And if I'm moving this around too much, I'm sorry. But, you know, I don't want to make you sick, but this is how it's got to be. Uh, that's Mexabel, so it's a spicy bell pepper. Really exciting. Um, yeah, that'll be a good for shade. So this is the miter saw, and uh, we covered it with a popped queen inflatable mattress that we use in the pool. 
but it became a cover. So recycle, reuse, right? Uh, this is the dirt. <laughs> it's future soil for the garden. There's perlite, uh, composted deodorized manure, peat moss, um, seed cover compost, and mushroom compost. And I usually mix the two composts together and then equal parts with peat moss and perlite or vermiculite. And those three parts to that equal a really good soil mix. So equal parts of perlite, peat moss, and compost and you have a good soil mix. And I usually throw in some deodorized manure so that it is a little less stinky and has a little more nitrogen. So this is corn, this is my corn field. And yeah, the corn, I was just getting lots of little ears and all of a sudden, you know, that starts drying up because of the crazy heat wave that we had. And so they got a little dry they weren't sweet, juicy corn, it was dry. So I'll just let, let those continue to dry and then grind them up for cornbread. Yeah. And this is Death by Pepper Patch. And these are doing really good. This is a Thai pepper and chitlapeen, and that's a habanero. This is catnip and chocolate mint. And then back here we have, these are newer transplants, and some of them you can see these little sticks. I don't know if they'll come back. Probably not, but um, there's a boot jalokia ghost pepper. That over there is Carolina Reaper. It's one of the hottest in the world. This is a scorpion butchet pepper. And then over there is King Naga. You can see it lost all Oh, where is it? I can't see it. On, oh, there it is. Little sticks right there. That's King Naga. And it's a spicy pepper. It lost all of its leaves when it shopped from the heat. And so hopefully it'll come back. It looks like it's budding out, so that's cool. And then this one is, I can't read it. Uh, that one is Trinidad Moruga Scorpion Pepper. So hopefully those will do better in this barrel, which I think is part of the problem. I may have to just shade the barrel. Um, it might just be getting too hot and cooking the roots. Who knows? They're not established enough yet. Uh, some lemongrass, and then we have our blue passion flower. And this thing is loaded with blossoms. I'm so excited. Chocolate flower, and that is Jenny Lind cantaloupe. This is a uh, amethyst passion flower. That is tidy treats. That's a determinant, so you can see the difference between a determinant and that's indeterminant. So indeterminant will grow like a vine and they just keep on going. And uh, determinant will grow like a little bush and produce like crazy and then it dies off. So that'll be interesting. I don't have any, that's my only determinant. This is a honey rock cantaloupe. You can see little melons starting right there. I sprayed some blossom um, set, so hopefully it'll set fruit this time. They keep dropping off probably because of the heat. This is an incense passion vine, and it got a late planting, and so I'm trying to do everything I can to keep it protected so it'll do okay. It keeps growing and then it kind of dies back and it grows and dies back, but this is some good growth just in the past couple of days, so I think the extra shade is helpful. Um, and this is the Purple Passion and it's doing really well. Growing like crazy, all that new growth. I love it. This is Old Tennessee Cantaloupe and those cantaloupes get, or melon, I don't know if it's cantaloupe or like honeydew type, I don't know. Crenshaw, I don't know but they get like 12 to 14 pounds. So I'm gonna to have to sling it, the fruit, as it grows, because cantaloupes can support themselves, but when they, the bigger melons, they don't, they need help. Uh, this is a Frederick and more lemongrass. This is Frederick passion flower. And I got this one because it has a fruit on it from the nursery. So I grabbed that one because I want the fruit. Um, anyway. Yeah, so then that's, that's the passion grotto. I call it passion because of all the passion flowers on it. 
not because of the the spa seating area where wah, 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 we could do all kinds of sort of thing in our passion grotto mm -mm -mm. okay so back by this death pepper section we have our oldest clump of chocolate flower so this chocolate flower is actually growing from that center clump the dogs can lay on it run on it roll in it do that they want and it just it's fine we didn't water it forever it's now getting water because it's right next to a mulberry and that mulberry was tiny when we got it um this is my drunken son so jeff and i were at a friend's house and on our way home walking through the neighborhood somebody had put this out for bulk pickup and i said "Ooh, that's cool and we grabbed it and walked home with it drunk as could be man it was fun and i don't mind a little bit of decay on things so there you go uh this is the plum so this this whole section i'm about to show you is our 100 foot wood uh yeah winnie the pooh 100 acre wood so it's 100 feet of um peripheral garden area and we have pumpkin and beans so those are bush beans and some purslane there is alfalfa in there i'll show you that in a minute but right here this is our plum cocktail and we have a peach cocktail over here they have not bud out we planted them in february they have not bud out yet but they're still the they're still green so i'm like letting it do its thing hopefully it'll come back if not then you know figure something out this is a goji berry and they do grow here they do produce but i have yet it's a new planting so um we'll see what happens i've never grown them before success or failure more pumpkin and this is some daikon radish and it still has these i put some neem oil but maybe not enough i'm a little worried about it because the neem can hurt can fry the plant a little bit but so do these things so if you ever see this weird like white growth they've basically sucked all the chlorophyll and good stuff out of the leaves i thought it was heat but it is not it is these damn bugs kill them all uh any oh this is i think that's some chamomile growing this is the alfalfa and it gets these flowers it is a legume did you know that alfalfa is a legume it's nitrogen fixing i gotta talk faster i'm gonna run out of time it's the apricot that thing was this high it was only this high when we got it and it's only been a couple months and boom it's growing like crazy um some people are gonna say oh you got it too close to that wall it's gonna fry it you know if it fries and i'm asking for help then offer your help otherwise shut the fuck up i don't want to hear it um so this is some um, okra not okra roselle hibiscus so they grow they flower they become uh, they get a calyx on them that can be made into a lovely drink called uh, it's either jamaica or jamaica however you know it um yummy stuff it can also be made into jam which is supposed to be really good that's an elderberry and oh you didn't like my f-bomb um, let me find my let me look in my pocket mm, yeah no fucks given there so a little apple tree it's an apple cocktail isn't that cute someday we'll be ready or maybe it is i don't know if you know let me know uh, more bush beans and my sad little blueberry i don't know if it's gonna like the heat um it's a pear and it's got this weird growth if you know what's going on there let me know i think it might just be irregular water i don't know uh, this is blackberry blackberry bush and i'm looking forward to that i love blackberries and this is the citrus grove oh look there's poop i didn't pick up the poop before the video how dare i damn criticizing me get a life um yeah so oh look at this bug this is a cool looking bug what are you dude what are you anyway i got a quarter okay this is the citrus hedge it will eventually be a hedge there's lime and oranges and lemon and grapefruit and all kinds of good stuff there's more um pumpkins in here more daikon all kinds of good stuff i hope you enjoyed the tour that's the clay room right there my clay studio and our backwoods clothes dryer <laughs>
Love you. Have a good day. Take care.